Okay, so let's start uh, this lecture. We will start about the Hunsu rule. I believe all students are very familiar with the Hunsu rule, even though they don't, uh, they didn't remember very details. I just uh, want to uh, remind uh, what is the Hunsu rule and why it is important in the manet here. Yeah, Hunsu rule means uh, there's actually three uh, rules of the uh, uh, Hunsu rule. And they all based on the energy minimization. It's like a lot of this flow. So, <clears throat> um, the first one is the uh, maximum multiplicity means they wanna uh, they try to align the maximize uh, the angular momentum. And there are three uh, kind of rules when all those rules based on the energy minimization and the uh, power exclusion principles. So you may remember this uh, kind of a uh, rule when you occupy the electron from starting the 1s, 2s, and 2p, 3s, and then uh, 3p electron is occupied, and then the next electron is came to 4s instead of the 3d. So as you see here, before uh, fill out the all 3D uh, uh, the 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 3D element already the the okay say here from the Chrome after fill out the uh, after fill out this uh, 3D electron the next electron is not going to this state the, the, there is some S state and also. Uh, in a mangan case, the next electron is going to uh, fill out uh, 4s instead electron instead of the 3d electron. After fill out all this uh, uh, 4s electron, they are starting again fill out the d electron from uh, here. So you can see some uh, rules in the occupation of the electrons in a multiple electron atoms. And actually, there is a good uh, explanation about the Hun's rule in a Wikipedia, and also there is a very nice website called Hyperphysics. Actually, I like this uh, site because they have a uh, very good uh, information over uh, many fields of the physics. Yeah, when I upload the, uh, my lecture note, please visit this website. It's a really good one. And if you don't remember some uh, physical law, you may visit this uh, hyperphysics website. You can easily find uh, the definition of the rules and uh, what's the related uh, quantity. There are very uh, good uh, link to uh, between the physical quantities. Okay, and also uh, as I already said, it is very important in the study of magnetism because. The magnetism of the those metals came from the d electrons. So occupation of the d electron uh, determine the the magnetic, property, magnetic properties of these 3D metals. Okay. And let's back to the hydrogen atom. In order to obtain the exact solution of the wave function uh, for hydrogen atoms with the that means the, there is a only one uh, nuclei and one electrons, so there is only simple Coulomb force, Coulomb force between them. And you may know the result. Uh, this result is a very simple representation of the the hydrogen atom in a Bohr model. Uh, the energy of the electron is defined by this number uh, minus thirteen point six electron volt divided by n square. Here n is the what we call the principal quantum number. And the orbital radius is determined by uh, multiplied by uh, n square to the A0. Here A0 is called the Bohr magnetron, uh, Bohr radius, Bohr radius, and uh, the magnitude is here, uh, 0.5 angstrom only. And the energy level, as you see here, uh, is scaled by n square, so it means it's quantized.
In this simple Bohr model, we can obtain uh, such energy uh, difference of each levels, and the radiation came from the transition in one state and the other state. And as you see here, in, if you, uh, some radiation from higher value of n level to the n1 level, the energy is quite large, so they are all down to the UV region. And if uh, the excited uh, electron is going down to the second level, the energy scale is uh, belong to the visible light. And as you see here, the red, this is uh, uh, green, blue, and going to almost to UV. And also, in this case, we have a very small energy difference, so we have an IR spectrum. So as you see here, uh, those ranges, the, they are uh, belong to the visible one. This is uh, IR one. Okay. So um, when we solve this Schrodinger equation exactly, we can obtain such a, uh, uh, we can obtain the solution by such assumption. The psi should be a function of the R set times phi in a, a spherical coordinate system. But uh, they can be separated by the R dependence function and uh, set time phi dependence function called the uh, spherical harmonics. When you solve this partial differential equation, you can obtain some eigenfunction of the system. Actually, they are eigenfunctions of the system. And this index L and M and also N, so N, L, M. They are all the meaning of n, l, m in this equation. They are eigenvalues of the system. It's mathematical meaning, but in a quantum, uh, in a physical meaning, physical meaning means they are quantum numbers. So uh, the if you determine the eigenvalue means the n, l, m values, you can specify these functions. And you can obtain the wave functions. And here, n we call principal quantum number. n l is the orbital quantum number. m l means the orbital magnetic quantum number. I'm going to explain more details of this. Before that, uh, oh. So um, the principal quantum. Oh, sorry. This n implies the principal quantum number, the name of principal quantum numbers, and they will determine the energy level of the hydrogen by this relation. The n is uh, vary from one to infinite. So if you go to the infinite number of n. The energy is going to zero. So that means uh, the electron is now uh, free from the uh, nuclei of the hydrogen. And the orbital quantum number means uh, they will determine the angular momentum of the system by this rule. That means uh, the the orbital the L means the, the, they characterize the orbital motion of the uh, electrons, so they will determine the angular momentum. And sometimes we call uh, SPF uh, orbits. That's the kind of historical name. And also, ML called the orbital magnetic quantum number. So that means it's quantization of the G component of the angular momentum. As you already mentioned, all those physical quantities are quantized. So if you have a given angular momentum here, given angular momentum here, they determine the only the magnitude of the angular momentum, not the direction of the angular momentum. The direction of the angular momentum defined by ML. So this ML means uh, the G component of the angular momentum. And those values are also quantized. So they are varying from uh, minus L to plus L. So this should be L.
And also, the last one, which one is not appeared in the shooting vacation, we didn't mention it, but there is some other quantum number called the fourth quantum number called the spin quantum number. And as we already mentioned, they are not appeared in the shooting vacation. We need a data equation to see this quantum number, the spin quantum numbers. So that's, in that case, we need relativistic quantum mechanics. Okay, so uh, let's take a look more details of the principal quantum number n first. So as we already said, it depends on n, the radius of the motion are changed, right? So uh, depends on this n number, n number, uh, the system energy determined, mainly determined by this principal quantum number. And also, the, this is the electron cloud of the uh, 1s electron the, the, when n is a one case. They like to just disappear. And if you have a, uh, n is two case, yeah, as, as you see here, we assume just a single circular motion, but the reality is there is a, a, some probability at the center of the uh, atoms. And also, there is a high probability region. They make a kind of shells. So the amplitude, scale of the amplitude, the scale of the wave function means the probability amplitude uh, high at the center and certain uh, certain radius. And there is also a certain region that there is no very low probability of the electron. So uh, as you see here, more details. The one s electron they have a those probabilities. So, electron, uh, there is some chance of the uh, uh, electron at this range. So, that's the actually exactly same to the Bohr radius. And for the 2s, we have uh, such forms. And 3s, we have uh, three peaks like this, three shells. Okay. okay. And the difference of this uh, size scale and the probability density means this value are not just uh, the scale of the wave function, but we have to multiply those terms. So when you increase the r, the magnitude is increased, something like this, and they are zero at the center. But here, the wave function itself, there is uh, such behavior. So don't confuse those um, physics and those meaning a little bit different. Um, no, 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 it's different. This electron for the level three, is so those probability functions. So that means there's a, a lot of chance electron finding here. And, but there is a certain amount of probability finding electron at here and here, not the, uh, uh, this point. I mean, I mean, the, the radius may be quite similar. I don't know exact number, but, uh, even though the electron is finding, if we found the electron at here, they may have a energy level of the N3, not the N1. So maybe some students have a question, how you can distinguish electron here and here? But the difference is only the energy. And as you know, the, the eject position of electron is not a uh, measurable. We just know the probability. Okay. And let's move on to the next one, next uh, quantum number, the orbital quantum number L. As you already said, the, we uh, have a physical quantum tick, angular momentum, and they are also quantized. So 
the mainly the, the energy determined the, the, by the principal quantum number in a, a single atoms like hydrogen, single electron atoms like hydrogen. But if we have a more electron, then the, the energy level will separate depends on the angular momentum. So in this cartoon, I explained only the S state called L is zero. L is zero means there is no angular momentum. So they have a spherical symmetry. There's no specific uh, free fold direction of the electron motion. So don't confuse. In this uh, cloud means, they doesn't mean the, such kind of orbital motion. The meaning of this cartoon means the electron can be exist here, 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 and here. We don't, if we know the electron position at once, we don't know the next position of electron. They can be found here or here or here. They are all probability, not this kind of circular motion. So the electron can be exist any place in any any time. So we cannot determine the uh, angular momentum in this case. The average value of the angular momentum is going to zero. And for the L is one case, L is one case. Uh, that means we have a certain amount of angular momentum. So when we uh, represent the angular momentum one state by the uh, spherical coordinate system, we have uh, those <coughs> three kind of uh, orbitals. Uh, Px means the orbital of the electron is belong to mainly along to the x-axis, and Py means along to the y-axis, and Pg means the along to the g-axis. So in this case, so let's say the PG uh, orbital case, the electron has a large probability along to the G axis, but not uh, X and Y axis. So the, those three energy states must be same when we don't have uh, uh, any preferred axis, but if the, electron, the, the atom is belong to the crystal or some multiple atoms, there is some preferred orientation. So they have a different energy. And also, let's think about the L is two case. That's called the D orbital. And there are three, uh, two kinds of D electrons. One is called DXY, DYG, DGX. As you see here, the D orbital with the subscription, uh, subscript with the multiplication of two coordinate systems, XY, YG, GX. And as you see here, XY means the orbital is belong to xy plane, but they are not uh, belong to the specific axis. They just uh, uh, belong to the uh, align to the diagonal axis. And yg also belong to the yg plane, and they uh, have uh, some diagonal terms. And there, there are two components, dx square minus y square and dg square. Here, dx square minus g square means uh, they are belong to the xy plane, as you see here, and they are belong to the each axis, x and y axis. And for the dg case, they are mainly belong to the uh, g axis and certain small amount of xy component. So as you see here, this orbital and those orbital are quite different to the g x direction. So they're gonna uh, give them some anisotropic property of the atoms. And finally, um, there's some other quantum, the third quantum number called the orbital multi quantum number, ML. As you see here, we, if we have an angular motion of the electron, we can determine the angular momentum of the such orbital motion. And if we apply some B field, B field, they will, uh, before we apply the minor field, all directions are physically the same. So there is no distinguishing the direction. But when we apply the minor field, the symmetry was broken. The symmetry of the system is broken. So before applied minor field, we have a spherical symmetry. But if you apply the minor field, the spherical symmetry is broken. 
So we can determine the g-axis to, <coughs> to the parallel to the minus field, and the projection of the angular momentum to the g-axis called the g-component of the angular momentum. And those directions are quantized. As you see here, if you have angular momentum L, the possible g-component is plus 2, minus 2. So the angular momentum vector should be something like this. So that means the g-component of the angular momentum is con uh, quantized means the direction of the angular momentum is also confined. And the marked potential energy difference because of the uh, uh, the, the magnetic field, as we already learned, the magnetic moment of the electron because of the angular momentum L is given by this form. Actually, those are. Uh, the gyro laser G. Okay. I'm sorry, not G. Should we come? We learn about the gyro magnetic motion. Okay. And the G man energy because of magnetic field B is given by this form, and the B is the we have we have said uh, uh, G direction. So what we need is the G component of the magnetic moment, or we can write this form. Okay. So. Uh, we know uh, Lg, the angular momentum of G component, is nothing as ml multiplied by h bar. Okay, so we obtain this term. So the energy is quantized. ml is uh, uh, changed from minus cell to plus cell. So that part is the dif uh, difference of the energy level uh, for a given orbital quantum number. So without magnetic field, uh, they are not, uh, there is no energy difference, so the energy level are not separate. But in many cases, even though we didn't apply the magnetic field, there is some kind of internal magnetic field because of the other atoms and many, many source of the magnetic field. So there is some possibility of we have a such kind of uh, energy split. And as we uh, learn about the Huns rule, uh, if we have a, a normal electron of the n, so in that case, the total occupation number of electron is uh, follow these rules. So um, the total number of ml is. 12 plus 1 because they are starting from the minus cell to plus cell. So those are 12 plus 1 here. And the L is learning from 0 to n minus 1 case. So we have a sum of all those terms. And we have a multiplication of 2 because of, we have a 2 different spin. So the total number of occupation number for a given n is given by 2n square. So when n is 1, 2n square is 2. And in this case, we have 8. In this case, we have 18. So based on this simple mathematical calculation, we can explain the periodic tables. So, um, uh, you know, 
17th and 19th century, many chemists found uh, few atoms and they tried to find the, the property of each atom. And they found some uh, similarity between the atoms and there's some rules. So they just uh, uh, make uh, some table. That's the, called the period table. At the first time, nobody understand what's the meaning of such rules, such a uh, periodicity. But after people start to understand this uh, quantum physics, it's very easy to understand the similarity between the, the atoms, between the elements in a periodic table. So it's very uh, important in a, not only the physics, but also the chemistry. So uh, what's the, then what's the meaning of the quantum number and the principal quantum number, orbital quantum number, magnetic orbital quantum number, spin orbital quantum number? Is, uh, I say it's a kind of a seat number in a theater. As you see, uh, there is some theater. There are many, many seats, but they all have each number. So, uh, if you, there is some many audiences, they usually prefer the better place, like uh, the uh, seat near the stage. Usually they are expensive. If uh, this audience allowed to sit anywhere, uh, first come, then can take the first seat, usually uh, people occupy this seat first. It's the same for the energy. So better view means the low energy of the system. So when we have uh, multiple electrons, they are starting uh, filling up the position from the lowest energy. So that is the very, uh, actually you already learned about this from the Huns rule. And this concept is very important in a solid state because the band theory is based on those principles. Okay. And if we have a certain gap here and all audience already occupied here, but those places are empty. Then those uh, uh, conduction band and their balance band, and there is some, some band gap. So uh, it's not uh, difficult to uh, compare the electron band to this uh, theater seat uh, model. And also, there's some simple example. Yeah, if all those uh, seats are occupied, let's assume all seats are occupied in, in this first level. And if we want to uh, move to the next seat, there is no chance because all seats are occupied. And if there is one seat is empty, and in the next guy, moving to the, uh, the those empty seat and move and all those uh, people are moving to the next seat, then it looks like the empty seat is moving. That's the concept of the whole. That is also very important concept in a uh, solid state physics. Okay. So those core, what we call the quasi particle. This hole is not a real particle, but we can handle it as a particle inside of the solid state. Anyway, so let's think about the, uh, some how we can fill out the energy state, for, for example, the vanadium. Vanadium has atomic number is 23, so we need 23 electrons. For the first electron, we can fill out uh, two electrons for spin up and spin down. In the 2s, we also have uh, 
so both occupation and two p we have a three uh, six electrons and three s we have also two and three p we have all six and let's think about a four s electron and three d electron if you take care of, uh, if you calculate the energy level of those case, we can find 4s electron energy is lower than 3d. So they are occupied first. And then they are occupied in with the same spins. Okay. And we have to pay attention about the energy scale. Here, the core electron energy is even less than minus uh, 1,000 electron volt compared to here, uh, 3D and 4SK. Let me recall the energy of the hydrogen. The lowest energy of the hydrogen atom is only uh, minus 13.6 electron volt. But in a modern case, the 1s electron has an energy of 1,000. Why is so strong? Because in a hydrogen, we have only, only one positive charge at the center, at the nuclei. So the Coulomb force between them are only between plus and minus charge. But in a but in case, we have a large number of the charge. And there is a very strong attraction force. So the radius is also decreased. So the, the force is very, very strong. That means the force electron is a very, very strong binding to the nucleus. So that means if you, you want to take out this 1s electron from the nucleus of the vanadium, you need uh, such energy. It's very huge one. And also, they are same. So those electrons are called core electron. Those core electron are uh, Actually, in you know, a uh, solid state physics, is never changed. That's why we call this core electron. But in sometimes we need to uh, touch this electron. In that case, we need very high energy. So in that case, we need uh, some very high energy electrons. Like then we need a uh, very huge, like a synchrotron radiation. And also, um, I want to say the the energy level of the photon is determined by this Planck uh, law. And for the uh, visual one, the red uh, red one, red light, has an energy level two electron volt. And you know. Uh, UV is starting from uh, 500 nanometer something. They are corresponding to 3 electron volt. So the visual light is range of 2 to 3 electron volt. So they can interact only those electrons in this level, something here. So those 1s, uh, 4s, and 3D electrons are interact with outside of the atoms in, in general energy scale, in the moderate energy scale. And also the chemical bonding is also allowed certain amount of the energy order of one electron volt. So only those outer shell electrons are actively uh, 
object with the other atoms. So that means they will determine all uh, many physical and uh, chemical properties. Uh, oh, you have a question. Oh, this is uh, just uh, I'm just talking about the the electromagnetic force, not the the electron force. The electron force is just only inside of the nucleus, not the outside of the nucleus. Okay, it's just the Coulomb force. Sorry about that. Okay, in a period table, we already know there's some one has electron for the hydrogen, and along to this line, we have uh, increased the n number, number n, two, three, four, something like this. And then uh, the 2p electron are occupied, so we are starting from 1s, helium uh, occupied here, and 2p, and 3s, and 3p. After fill out the 4s, we fill out 3d. Okay, and then uh, 4d, I'm uh, sorry, 4p, 4s, and 4d, 5p, something like this. So uh, those fill the table when you take a look the first time. Yeah, it looks very strange table, but now you can easily understand the why there is a empty part here and we need uh, this layer of uh, material to here something here okay okay so now um, actually so far I explained a very uh, broad range of the quantum mechanics but we the main purpose of this class is about the magnetism so we have to focus on the D electrons. The D electron, especially in a those case, we call uh, transition metal. So most important metal in a magnetium we call 3D transition metals. Okay, so let's focus on property of the 3D transition metals. In transition metal, uh, as you already mentioned, there is some uh, 4s electron, and sometimes we have a, a 4p electron. And 3d electron orbital is belong to here. Okay, uh, good questions. Actually, uh, uh, exact meaning of trend, I, uh, yeah. mm, the post means here, we divide the uh, table here, and those parts we call transition metal, and then after this number, we call the post tension metals, but I'm sorry, but I didn't know what's the exact meaning of this post now. I, I wanna uh, find it and then uh, answer to you. I'm sorry. So here, the important thing is the D electron is somewhat um, behind of the 4s electron. So that means the outer electron is 4s, and they are a little bit screened by, the, the 3D electron is screened by the 4s. So many chemical property determined by property of the 4s, not the uh, 3D. But the balance properties mainly came from the 3D because of this localization. The localization of the electron is very important in the magnetism. So I'm going to explain why why 3D electron is important in the magnetism. 
But here is one thing. Here, I'm sorry. Here, the all those guys actually transmitter is something like here. There are uh, four electron, uh, two all of this, and one for this one, and two for this one. So those the chemical property of those materials are quite similar. So that means uh, it is hard to separate each other by the chemical meaning. That's, uh, so um, actually, the, if you have uh, some atom mixture and they have a similar chemical property, it's very difficult to separate them by the chemical reaction. So that's why in a layer uh, material, uh, it's very difficult to find the pure uh, layers element. Uh, they, that means its cost is expensive. Okay. That, part, that part. Okay. So um, the localization of the 3D electron is important in the minor property, as I said, then why? Why the localization is important? In order to understand that physical meaning, we need the band theory. Okay. So, um, I want to explain about the very basic of the concept of band, but before that, I want to also uh, recall some uh, mathematical representation to help the students understand. Yeah, I'm sorry that uh, there is some kind of mathematics, but uh, it's necessary. Okay, first I want to explain the concept of vector space. Let's think about some three-dimensional space, and if we have uh, any vector A. And this vector can be represented by this equation. Here, this i, j, k represent the basis vector of the uh, three-dimensional space. And those uh, i I, J, K represent uh, actually the unit vector to the x direction and y direction and g direction. And they are all also around each other. And also they are unit vector, so when you take the inner flow dot, magnitude is one. So it's uh, simple. I think uh, it's not, uh, no problem for all students. And let's think about that. If we now we are talking about the uh, uh, four dimension then what we need is a extra unit vector and this can be generalized for the n dimension n dimensional space we need n basis vector and that means if we have a n basis vector we can represent any vectors in n dimensional space that's a generalization. Okay. Okay, so when I uh, give a lecture about this vector space, if someone has a question, please ask me. Because if you don't understand, uh, it's very difficult to the remaining part. I want to make sure all students understand this concept. Okay. And here, uh, let me ask a simple question. Here, uh, what's the meaning of A1? 
or A2 or A3. And also A4. Okay, those scala number meaning is projection of the vector to the specific direction. So A1 means projection of the A vector to the first basis vector. And just imagine if the A vector is quite parallel to the uh, x axis, then we can easily imagine those relations. A1 scalar number is quite larger than A2 or A3. So in that case, this A vector has a large property similar to the I direction. Yeah, uh, or you can say the A vector is quite uh, a similar direction to the X direction. It's the same for the other direction. So that means, the position means, if you have a vector and the direction, how, uh, what, uh, by the checking the of this H uh, scala number, you can imagine the direction of the vector. Or I want to say, uh, uh, using the uh, word property instead of the direction, because the direction of vector means the property of the vector. Yeah, that's the computing part. But if we are talking about the vector space, the property is more uh, uh, correct uh, representation of the instead of the direction. Okay. Let's think about that, uh, some Fourier transform, the Fourier series. You know, uh, in a Fourier series, if you have uh, some periodic functions, for example, if you have uh, some square wave, they can represent sum of many, many sine or cosine curve, right? So that's the mathematical representation of the Fourier series. Here, we, we can define this cosine and sine to certain vector. Right? So, uh, if we uh, represent cosine and sine to unit vector, you can usually find the orthonormal property between them. We already learned uh, cosine is non-zero, but cosine theta multiplied sine theta give a zero. And also cosine n theta, cosine m theta, they give a such relation. So they are also gonna each other. And also, you can find the Scala number or magnitude of the uh, each component you can obtain by taking the such integral. It should be M here. Sorry. So that is the projection, or they are same to the such inner product. So actually, those integral are definition of the inner product in a vector space. Those integral is the inner product. Is it okay also? This vector space concept is a little bit abstract. So if you're never taking some linear algebra class, it's not easy part. Please answer to me. Is it okay?
How about Victor and Leah? Is okay? Okay. Good. Then uh, it's easy to explain later part. So that means, uh, what's the meaning of this uh, coefficient? If we have a large coefficient for specific m value, that implies those uh, function has a large property of a given frequency. If you have a, a such kind of square wave, then mainly they can represent this simple sine curve. So that means they have a property of those frequencies component. But if we have a, this sharp part, we have a, a, large, a very a high frequency component to describe this sharp part. So that means they have a, a such kind of high frequency component also. So um, let me give us some simple example. If you have a, some photo of the people, if you save it to the bitmap file, BMP file, all information of this uh, photo represent the color, you know, this uh, photo consists by many, many pixels. And each pixel has a information of the RGB number. We can represent all those property by this uh, RGB number. But if you save it to the JPG, oops, JPG file, this J, this file is nothing but Fourier transform of the, your photo. So after you tra trans taking the Fourier transform of this photo, they saved as a uh, you know frequency space, and then uh, in order to reduce the uh, amount of the file, what they are doing is they cut off the high frequency terms. That means in a bitmap. If there is some uh, black pixel here and there's white pixel here, but in a JPG, the, these are less black and they are a little bit gray one. So it's more smooth because they are losing the information in high frequency. But even though we lost such information, we never lose the overall behavior of the photos, we still keep the low frequency terms. But after we cut off the high frequency term, we can save a lot of memory. That's the uh, basic idea of the, the uh, JPG. So that means if we have uh, such functions, such functions, instead of, instead of uh, saving all those information, we can save only some uh, certain leading part of the uh, these properties, and then you have uh, information of something like this instead of the exact scale one. But you can save a lot of memory. So anyway, so that's the meaning of this amplitude or projection or property of your given function to, to a given uh, vector direction. Okay. So, um, in a mathematical uh, study, people believe, uh, people, uh, people know that in a vector space, in a vector space, if we have a, a complete basis vector set, then we can represent any functions. That means if we have a sine, cosine to the infinite series, we can represent any function by the combination of sine and cosine. Or if we have a n basis vector, then we can represent any vector by, uh, by these basis vectors. OK. 
Okay. And um, in a quantum mechanics, we already proved it. The wave function, wave function is a kind of a basis vector. So any wave function can be represented by those linear combination of the basis vector. And also they have orthogonal properties, also normal properties. So in many quantum mechanics, we're gonna we're gonna using the, those rules. So it's based on the vector space and the complete uh, basis vector theory. And in a, instead of those uh, notation, sometimes we are using a black cat notation by bra and cat notation. That means they are integral. Instead of those complex mathematical representation, you can simply using this notation. Okay. And let's back to the uh, hydrogen atom again. When you solve the Schrodinger equation, we already mentioned that we can obtain the uh, spherical harmonics called uh, those equations. Those spherical harmonics is nothing else but kind of spe uh, special functions is well defined by uh, uh, mathematics. And if you know, already know the L and M represent the quantum number. So, when S is zero case, we have a L is zero and M is zero. So when you're taking the uh, image of the, these spherical harmonics, we have a sphere here. And when L is uh, one case, when L is one case, we have a ML is one uh, plus one zero minus one. So here we have uh, two cases uh, when L is zero, ML is zero, and this is uh, ML is one or minus one. If you take the square, it's same. And for the N is two case, we have uh, those result, and this is N is three case. And uh, please remember that the shape of the orbital, those orbital and a little bit different from the P, X, P, Y, and P, G. Why they are different? Because they are basically the same, but uh, different linear combination of basis vector. Here, uh, this is a P orbitals, and those are D orbitals. Uh, I want to recall this one again. And here, uh, this is uh, y l minus one. Ah, sorry. Y one minus one. Y one plus one. Y one zero case. Okay. So those, let's say p y, those are p y orbitals. And they should be represented by the linear combination of these three basis vectors. And those are coefficients. And in order to obtain the magnitude, what we need is taking the inner product between those two vectors. And as you see here, if you multiply those orbitals to here, you can easily imagine they are going to zero. And those are belong to the y axis, and they are belong to the x y plane. So those are same. Actually, this looks same, but the, this uh, this shape actually the scale of the uh, the functions. So they have a uh, different phase, not the uh, absolute value. So it looks like same, but different phase. So that's why we're taking the integral for the py. They obtained uh, such number. Okay. So that means the py orbital is nothing else but the linear combination of 
those two basic factors. So if we have a xy plane here, the py is something like this, but the y1x, y11 is something like this. Yeah, so when you multiply those terms, those terms, we have a certain number, okay? So, um, as you already said, uh, the p orbital, py, px, represent by linear combination of those two. So py must be different sign here, probably minus one. And for the pg, as you see here, we have a zero for this one, zero, but maybe one for a zero, because those are quite similar to the pg. Okay. That's the uh, concept of the uh, orbital motion from the spherical harmonics. Then why we need the PX and PYPG instead of the, this representation? Because PX, PYPG is more easy to uh, explain the bonding between the atoms. It's uh, more easy to understand. Okay. Yes, this is the imaginary number. Yeah, those are imaginary number. So that means imaginary number means it's different phase. So uh, yeah, actually in this class we don't need uh, uh, too much details of such things. I need those understanding for the band theory. Yeah, in the next class I'm gonna start the uh, band theory. Okay, I think it's time for the questions. Today I'm explaining uh, my mathematics, so if you have any question about this mathematical concept, please. Uh, yeah, this bracket notation is uh, very uh, useful for the uh, quantum mechanics, especially in the second quantization concept, which one is important in uh, uh, solid state physics. But uh, this bracket notation itself is very abstract. Uh, there's no uh, good example or uh, good uh this for the yeah i'm sorry but i have no i no good idea yeah actually um i have one a funny example i'm sorry about this is the korean language one um when we are talking about some korean uh language typing uh we know the uh sky Earth, people. Now I'm talking about Chonji in. Yeah, it's uh, for the Korean student, but I'm sorry for the French student. That means, uh, Chon means the sky, those represent the sky, those represent the earth, and those represent the people. And those are related to the Hangul. Yeah, if we have uh, those three symbols, we can combine any kind of uh, uh, words. So, uh, 
let's say this part of those part is a linear combination of those two basis vectors. So this bracket means the basis vectors. So any kind of uh, things represent by And those are different by here the plus means uh, in upper side, minus means uh, uh, sorry, lower side and the upper side. The minus and plus give a different place here. Uh, actually, this uh, this rotation is uh, just uh, image by myself, so it's not a uh, perfect uh, uh, representation, but with these three basis vectors, we can com combine all, all sound, right? Yeah, I believe all Korean students are easy to understand. So in a in a smartphone we can we need only these three buttons to make the make all combinations. So those are actually basis vectors. So black can be uh, we can uh, represent those uh, things in black notation by making them basis vector in a sound. Or other good example is RGB. You know, when you represent color, what you need is the basis of a red component and G component and the blue component, red, green, blue. By combining the number from 0 to 205 of these three different vectors, we can make many, many combinations of colors, multiple, almost of colors. So they also can be represented by black and rotation. Okay. So if you multiply uh, then Then they represent some colors. I don't know the exact name, but there are some colors. There's also a representation or a good example of the bracket notation. Is it helpful, Taeyong? Okay. Yeah, please ask uh, uh, two or three more questions.
Oh, I didn't say anything. <laughs> can you hear me? Gino, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I didn't say anything. Yeah, I'm waiting your questions. Gino, do you have any question? Okay, that is a good question. Um, can you ask me uh, if you, you know, transient metal, if there's uh, many unpaired electrons, unpaired electron means there's some um, unpaired spins, uh, what happens? Actually, those uh, large number of unpaired spins, we have a uh, magnetism. So this unpaired electron is very important in the magnetism. Okay. So uh, in a single atom, the mangan and chrome, they have a large magnetic moment of a single atom. But in a metallic system, there are something more. So we usually have a large magnetic moment in a cobalt and iron. So in cobalt and iron, they have a large angular, uh, large magnetic moment, but not the mangan. But in an atomic case, mangan has a large magnetic moment because of these unpaired electrons. Okay, let's take one more question, please. Okay, uh, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to close. Oh, okay. Oh, there is uh, only uh, 20 electrons. So, uh, compared to, yeah, uh, you should compare those cases and uh, those case. So in that case, those energies are smaller. Those energies are more stable. So when we making those closed shell, the energy is getting lower. So instead of the one electron occupied in a 4S electron, they preferred the occupied electron here instead of over here. Okay. So all it's all about the energy. Yeah, actually, that explanation requires a lot of mathematical calculations, but uh, empirically, it is uh, not so difficult to understand. Uh, the feeling all this uh, sub should getting lower the system energy. Okay. Okay, so um, let's close today's lecture. I'm going to upload the recorded uh, lecture. So, okay, so what's your question? Okay, don't confuse it. That representation, uh, how can I say? Yeah, you know, uh, in a Huns rule, we have uh, three Huns rules. One, two, three. And sometimes they are violate each other. So in that case, we need uh, some preference. So at that case, usually, uh, you know, in, even though for s electron is lower one, but we have to think about full system. system. So 
uh, as I already said, when we fill out all these uh, subshells, the energy of the system is getting lower. So we should compare to uh, those case to this case, and the energy of this system is lower than this one. Yeah, actually, those results are not uh, very simple, but uh, uh, you should, uh, before, uh, if you cannot calculate the total energy, you should uh, uh, think about the uh, case by case. Yeah, but the truth is the total energy of this computation is lower than this one. Okay, uh, those uh, crystal quantum number, yeah, they are all about the single electron case. If we have uh, more electrons, it's getting more complex and more complex. We need more, uh, many, we have to consider many, many things. Okay. Uh, if uh, n is increased, then energy is getting higher. Large n is uh, high energy. That means it's unstable. For example, here we have a very, very low energy. That means this one has is really, really uh, stable. It's almost impossible taking out this one as electron. But while this first electron is easy to taking out. Okay. If you have more questions, you may ask me after this class. Okay, uh, let me close this lecture here and